The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome back to a podcast. Just just one, just a podcast. Um, I always, because I've recorded in my house, I always forget to have one of these like schnazzy long form things. And obviously because I'm in London, you know, I, I producer Courtney, she's asleep. So this is a podcast. And then I traveled near and fucking far with this mic flag. And if you're listening, not watching, it's like the little box that says probably podcast that goes on the end of the mic. And guess what? It doesn't fit. So anyways, we're showing this because the effort was there. There's always some sort of an effort, but we have a solo podcast today. I'm in a Georgina studio in London. Um, uh, it was really last minute. Classic me. Uh, always extending my trip. It's just really hard to want to leave when one, your boyfriend's here and he's like super mega hot. And then two, you're also just like London fucking rules. And Nashville's really cold. Sometimes I can easier leave London if I'm like, oh, Nashville is calling my name, the sunshine. But like Nashville's weather has been shit. And I keep seeing it on everyone's story. So I'm like, I'm not going back. So another week here it goes. But uh, yeah, I did have a podcast due and solo it is. And I didn't want to do it in James Flat. I just felt like it would be more elevated if we did it in here, but I did walk in and then there was like a solo podcast. So those are interesting and hard. I was like, yeah, every time. And I just posted this on my Instagram recently, but every time I do a solo podcast, I end it and I look at producer Courtney usually. And I go, was that the fucking worst thing ever? And she's always like, no. And I'm like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So the fate for this absolutely lovely dashing, um, Londonite, is that what you guys would be called? A Londonite? He's like, I can't hear you back here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to ask him the same thing. We're done. Was that terrible? Okay. He's also probably like, this girl talks so fucking fast. I do. So classic me extending my trip. Um, But yeah, getting harder to leave each other. People were asking me that. Like, how's the long distance going? Obviously, it's a means to an end. It's just the U.S. government. They don't they don't love they don't love outsiders. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's just been a bit difficult and it's hard to like you're almost like, where do I begin? Right. Like the visa process. It's like a giant swirling ball of information. And if you just try to Google, like, how do I get an American visa? It's like and then like every other one, it's like you're a dumb bitch, you're a dumb bitch. So it's just been a bit harder than we thought. Plus, like right now, we're just kind of visiting each other anyway. So like if the way that we're visiting each other and he still has to come back to his flat, he still has work. Yes, do in London. I still have stuff in America. So the end goal is to get him there. You know what I mean? And I'm building a house. We're putting down roots. She bought dirt. She bought dirt. So, yeah, that's the end goal. It's just proving to be a bit more difficult than you know, I, I love everyone for being like, he should just move there. I'm like, wouldn't that be swell? Wouldn't that just be delightful? So um, we're trying. We're actively trying. It's just, you know, it's been a doozy. So we'll see. There's this thing called flag polling, which James would nev- never even really need to do because he's not here for three months at a time. But technically, the U.S. government lets you stay in America for three months at a time. Then you got to <laughs> hightail it back. And some people like, if someone's really like living, living in America, then I think they would get in trouble if they like came for three months, left for a week, came for three months. I don't really know. But James, you know, he doesn't come for three months at a time. He would come the longest he's been in America before is like a month. And then I've been here like a month. I don't really think the I'm about to indict myself, um, but I don't think the UK really gives a fuck that I'm here. They're like, cool. Sounds good. Use the pounds, bring your dollars. So, um, I could be wildly wrong on all of that. I usually am. I almost never research anything that I talk about. It just flows out of my fucking mouth. So that's what flew out today. Um, Okay. So everyone (laughs) was messaging me and I love you guys. Very sweet. But whenever I was like, so do I update you guys on my life? Do I say like what's been going on lately? But there was a time where I was like listening back to episodes being like, oh, nobody gives a fuck what you just did this weekend. But you guys are like, no, we care. Like, oh, I I will always give it to the OG listeners. I care about new listeners too, but the OG listeners are like, we want to like know what you've been up to, girly pop. So the country mouse was in petty. Okay. Here's the thing. Went to Paris, absolute bucket list, dream come true. Like loved every fucking second of it, but I'll break it down. So obviously, and I've told you guys before, James wanted to drive there. Actually, maybe I only just told my Instagram. James wanted to drive to Paris. So he doesn't get to London's a lot like New York in the sense that like you don't if you drive in London, you're like, stop, start, start, stop, 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 start. It's like very trafficy, very congested. There's no like open road when we're in Nashville and James and I are like driving to the grocery store. He's like, I just love it here. I just love the open road. I'm like, what? We're, we just drove 1.2 miles to the grocery to Publix to get a pub sub. He's like, oh, it's just so nice. I'm like, 
what? But anyways, yeah, they just like don't have that stretch, right? Obviously, James drives a nice, fast little zoom, zoom, you know, matchbox car. So great for him. Glad he got his dream car. But he likes to go really fast. So we he was like, instead of taking the Eurostar, which I was actually really excited to take the Eurostar. So I do still want to do that again. Maybe I can convince some of my girlfriends to come and we can take the Eurostar, which is basically just like a train, obviously, that takes you from London to Paris. These fuckers are so lucky. I've said this before, but like like we could go to Florida on a plane in two and a half hours. They can go to Paris or Greece or fucking anywhere. And I'm like, why doesn't America have trains either? Trains are fucking titties. So, um, yeah, we, we did not take the Eurostar. I will do that another time we drove. So here was what happens when you drive, you take it. So a lot of Americans messaged me were like, it's called a channel. And I'm like a channel, but apparently New York has one too. It's a tunnel that takes your car from, So you, so we drove like an hour and 45 minutes to this like uh, tunnel place, right? Got the tickets, scanned ourselves in. It was actually very high tech. They like scan your license plate. They're like, welcome Middleton. We're like, okay. And then you, you drive your car very organized too. It's like each train has a A, B, C, D. And then you forget, duh, or I forget because I'm a dumb bitch, but I forget like, oh, we're going into another country. So you have to show your passports, you have to do whatever. So on the way there, we're like 15 minutes away from his house, maybe not even 15 minutes. And he was like, did you grab my passport? And I was like, why would I have grabbed your passport? This is the thing I do. I'm like, I'm very uh, controlling in the sense that I like to just like make sure everyone has everything. And I'm kind of like type A in that regard, but it really kind of annoys people. And it definitely annoys James because he's like, I'm not a child. I can do things myself. Like I always just want to like, he'll be, he'll be like cutting a cucumber and I'm like, I can do that. And he's like, oh my God, just let me cut the cucumber or he'll be doing something. And I'm like, oh, here, let me just show you. And he's like, Shannon, you've got to let me do my own thing. So that's, and that's like a genuine conversation we've had before. Like I wouldn't call it a fight, but like, he's actually asked me kindly to like, let him do his own thing and not treat him like a child. And I, I don't know if it's just the other people I've dated in my life that were preferred being treated like a child, but I was just like, okay, I've got to be better about that. So and it's nice once you realize it's nice to date a grown ass man who wants to fucking cut his own cucumber and check for his own passport. It's fantastic. Living the life. So, yeah, I was like, why? Why would I have grabbed your passport? And he's like, oh, no, I, I forgot it. And I was like, you did. But again, we were less than 15 minutes away from the house. So I was like, it's OK, like get your passport. So we, we turn around, but we did have to make the tunnel like so I we like joked about it on, on Instagram. Right. We're like, ha 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 funny. He left his passport because we were 10 minutes away. So he goes back, he gets the passport. We get to the channel, the Euro tunnel. Here they call it a Euro tunnel. America would call it the fucking channel. That sounds like like a dessert you eat. So we get to the channel, we tunnel, channel, I don't know, whatever. We get to the Euro tunnel. We give our passports. We go through the security check. We drive the car onto a train. Let me tell you guys what I was picturing. I'm like, okay, so I know for a fact this tunnel takes our car under the sea, under the sea. It takes us under the sea to France, right? And then you drive to Paris. I'm like, oh my God, one, I'm feeling so claustrophobic already. Two, do I get to like, do we like see, like I'm picturing, so I went to the the aquarium, this like iconic aquarium in Dubai, this little flux. And um, yeah, I went to it and it was like the most gorgeous thing. You walk through this big tunnel. You could Google it. It's like a giant tunnel that has like fish and shark and fucking mermaids and algae and whatever. And you're just like staring at it as you walk through the tunnel. That's what I pictured the Euro tunnel bean, that ain't it, sister. We literally drive onto this like rickety, like metal plank, you know, they're like engines off, windows down, you like turn it off. There's like porta potties. I mean, honestly, it's not, it wasn't like dirty or anything. It was just like very like cold and industrial for sure. And then you're on it for like 30 minutes and you watch you, you do, you, there's like tiny little windows, but obviously you just see like land, land, land. And then it's black because it's just like a metal tunnel. Um, so we get there. So hour and 45 minutes to the tunnel place, 35 minutes in the tunnel. It was very easy by the way. Then we leave the tunnel and then we have three hours to drive into Paris from like France location. That was, that was a really trying time for me because like I said, James drives a very fast car. He, the roads were motherfucking open. They were so open, so wide. He was like a kid in a candy store. I could not look. And I'm actually not a scaredy cat. Like my little brother's obsessed with cars. He drives fast. I'm a pretty aggressive driver. I don't like speed that much, but I'm just not like, ah, I'm not a backseat driver. I'm not ever telling someone to slow down or watch this, like whatever. I, he shaved fucking years off my life. Like I 
will absolutely die hotter because I'm going to die younger now because of the amount of time he shaved off my life from going over. Oh, and it wasn't in, it was in kilometers, the speed limits. And actually in London, it's in miles per hour, the speed limits. So he kept being like 130, it says. And I'm like, hey, not funny. But he actually was going over 100 the whole time. It was supposed to take us three hours to get there. And I know this is not a flex talking about like driving cars really fast, but I'm just being completely honest with you guys. He was going so fucking fast. So yeah, he, we got there probably in like two, two hours and 20 minutes. Like he shaved like 40 minutes off. That's probably not true. But I think he shaved half an hour off for sure. And then we get to Paris. Here's the thing about Paris. So for Europeans, and this is, you guys might know this, might not. It's a very, everyone was being like, why didn't you stay longer? Why didn't you stay longer? The thing is they go for like the weekend. Like I said, we could go to like, no one would be like, why'd you only stay in Florida for a weekend? Because we'd be like, oh, we went to Florida for the weekend. That's how it is here. Like people go to Paris for the weekend. So we knew we had to be back on Sunday because his family was having like a big, beautiful lunch. And then we left on Thursday. We got there. We had Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday all day, sorry. And then Saturday morning and we left on Saturday morning. So like I still enjoyed it, but obviously we'll be back. I definitely did the most just absolutely American thing ever. And I was like, okay, so can we splurge on the room that has a terrace that looks at the Eiffel Tower? He's like, sure. And I'm like, okay. So we did that. Which, of course, naturally, like the trolls were like, did you go to Paris just to sit in your balcony all day? No, bitch. But that's where I took all my photos because I had a view of the fucking Eiffel Tower. Why wouldn't I do that? That is smart. That's smart. New year, new wardrobe. However, all of y'all know I said I am trying to save shmoney in 2023. We are turning this into a finance podcast, remember? Okay, no, we're not. I'm kidding about that. But I am not kidding about an amazing shopping hack that I have for y'all. Fashion Pass. Now, Fashion Pass is amazing because it takes the commitment and the massive price tags off of amazing designer pieces. You're able to rent these gorgeous clothes and it's unlimited for a flat price. And they legit have the best brands. They got for Love and Lemons, Amanda Uprichard, Free People, Show Me Your Moo Moo, and tons more. But honestly, I'm just listing a few of my faves right there. You can swap out your items as many times a month as you want. So it feels like you're just consistently shopping and getting new clothes every week. But for literally a fraction, a slim of the price. I am currently on the trendsetter plan, so I get to pick four clothing items in every order, or I could pick three clothing items and two accessories, which is usually what I tend to do because I'm just a gal that loves a funky, cool piece of jewelry or like a fun bag to make my outfit pop. I honestly, I just find myself wanting these really cool, trendy pieces because as y'all know, because I've said it time and time again, I am the consumer. I will follow a trim baby, but then I'm just like over them in like a month or two, you know, because I'm human and that's how it works. So this just saves me so, so much money in that regard. And I don't want to gatekeep it from y'all. The shipping is super fast. They handle the cleaning for you. So no worries there. Just send it back in the pre-labeled bag they give you. And also if you do fall in love with the piece and you decide, Hey, this is more of a staple than a trendy piece. You can buy it from fashion pass and they give you mega discounts towards the purchase, like legit 30 to 70% off. And every month I get a $10 purchase discount that counts towards anything I buy. I have got a killer discount code for you guys as well. If you go to fashionpass.com and use code probably at checkout, you'll get $60 off your first month so that you can try it for literally $29. That's unlimited rentals for just $29 with the code probably. You're welcome. It was really cold. It was stunning. It was beautiful. It was absolutely freezing. Like it was the wind chill. That's the thing too. Like I don't mind rain that much actually, but like the wind was out of control. We like walked to the Louvre and then the line was super, super long. And he was like, James was so sweet. He was such a good sport because I know he's been to these places a million times before, but he was like, do you want to go in? And I was like, do you want to go in? And he was like, do you want to go in? Because literally I wish it was like Disney World and we had a fast pass, track fast, pass fast, whatever those things are called. Because I was like, I, I physically, I don't think I, I, I'm sure the stuff in there is beautiful. I'd love to see Miss Mona herself, Lisa, but I, I can't just stand in here. Like I can't. So we went, we did the most like touristy stuff ever, which was just like, go see the sites, whatever. I did not do any shopping just because like we were there for 36 hours. I don't need to go buy a Chanel bag. Like I just wanted to like see Paris. We did a lot of eating, which I was really excited about. Um, we ate at like really, really proper French cafes. So interesting fact about James, he speaks French. He majored in French in college, university, whatever they fucking call it. And he did drop out of that because he said, and I quote, his mom loves telling the story. He called his mom and said, 
mom, I'm so confused. They just speak nothing but French. And she's like, yeah, you're fuck- you're majoring in French. So he did switch majors, but he's very, very well spoken in French and can speak. I w- I'd venture to say fluently. So that was helpful. But I don't think I realized classic uncultured American swine, me, not you guys, but me. I don't think I realized like, hey, you're going to another country. (laughs) This is so stupid, but like you're going to another country. Like you should just like brush up, like just know some pleasantries because we're going for such a short amount of time. I was like, oh, it's okay. And because I knew I had the crutch of James knowing French anyways, I basically just knew. Hello. Bonjour. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. And then like you say bonsoir and at night. Yeah, it's still kind of lost on me. I honestly was just a mute. The people that hate me on the internet would have loved being in France with me because I just kind of like stayed quiet most of the time. If anyone spoke to me, I would just be like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, thank you, messy, messy. Like I was just honestly very quiet. So um, yeah, that was great. There was one French restaurant that I, I almost asked the waiter for an, an English menu and James looked at me with like these lasers in his eyes. He's like, do not ask him if there's an English menu. And I was like, but I can't read anything. Surely, surely they have one, like classic American thinking that everything's catered to us. And he's like, they do not, do not ask that. I'm like, okay, 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 I won't. But yeah, the food was absolutely fucking phenomenal. I posted all the restaurants that's in my Paris highlight on my Instagram, but just really, really good. So yeah, we basically just ate and then like saw the sights, enjoyed Paris in general. Just like we would just sit there and people watch like on a bench or something. And then our hotel was fabulous. I mean, we did enjoy the hotel as well. So, oh, the most important thing ever. Okay. So, so basically we have a great time in Paris. We leave, right? It's, it's Saturday. We actually have dinner with James friends that night. We'd already planned it. It was at like 8 p.m. or something normal for a Saturday night. So we go, we leave Paris. It's wonderful. Country Mouse in Paris. We just fucking loved it, right? And then we come back and we're driving back. So remember, the, this, is, this is why I kind of broke it all down. So remember, we now have to drive from Paris three hours to the Euro Tunnel, 35 minutes in the Euro Tunnel, and then an hour and a half back to his London flat from the Euro Tunnel, right? Okay. We're into the drive. He is driving so fast, so fast. By the way, our, our hotel was fabulous and offered us like a pack lunch, which we didn't need because we had a really big breakfast, but we weren't going to say no. So we took this gorgeous packed lunch. But then it was like, James has such a fucking small matchbook car that I, I was like, why are these sandwiches and salad and everything sitting on me? So when we stopped in Paris, we gave it to a homeless person. Kind thing to do. And then as we're driving, because we're like, we're going to be there in two and a half hours. We are two hours down the road. Two hours down the road, we stop at a gas station. James says, do you have my passport? Do you have my passport? I says to him, why the fuck would I have your passport? And he was like, oh, oh, wait. Okay, no, I think it's in my, there's not many spaces in this car, okay? His trunk boot that's in the front, we could bring one tiny, tiny little carry-on suitcase and then a duffel and that's it. In in the actual, like, seated area of the car my purse and like his wallet can basically feel like that's it so I was like well you should go ahead and check so he unpacks the whole like front part of the car looks through everything everything and I'm like do you want me to call the hotel he's like I'm like where would you have left it in the hotel he's like the bedside table maybe and I'm like why are you saying maybe did you put your passport in the bedside table he's like I can't remember and I'm like just be honest. Did you, do you remember? You, of course you'd remember. Did you put it in the bedside table? He's like fucking classic men. I'm like, he's like, oh, I just don't have a memory of doing that. I'm like, then why are you saying that it might be there? I just feel like he was bless his soul. I feel like he was embarrassed that it was like there. Also, I just found out that, uh, people in England say bless your cotton socks. It's like our version of bless your heart, which kind of means you're talking shit about someone. So bless his fucking cotton socks, because I think it was just embarrassed, but I called the hotel. They're like, Oh, Miss well, me. Uh, yes, we will check. Of course they call back three minutes later after he's checked all luggage being like it's not in here i'm like well you better hope they call back and say it's there and also my dumb ass was like well i guess you're gonna have to overnight it sorry sucks to suck and he's like shannon we can't get back into london without it we're in france and i was like damn it brexit so i was like okay so the hotel calls back they're like yes we we yes 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 it's here it's here with your house keys and your driver's license, like his, like their driving permit to drive in France. I was like, are you serious? He's like, oh, I was looking for those two. I was like, oh my God. So what did I do in that moment? 
And honestly, I feel bad because James isn't here to defend himself, but he has absolutely no defense in this situation. There's no de- defense for this, okay? And also, men don't get to defend themselves. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. Not really. So, yeah, basically, I will say, and I will I will give myself some props here. I realized in that moment, what like what are we gonna what are you gonna do you know what i mean you're gonna like bitch at james and be like i can't believe you lost this blah, blah, blah. like what are you gonna do guess what we have to do we have to get in the car we're already in the car we have to drive two hours we just drove two hours we have to drive two hours back then we have to drive two hours back so two four six eight who do we fucking appreciate not james in this moment okay but we're just we're just taking deep breaths and i just looked at him and i was like accidents happen it's okay I know you guys are going to think I'm lying, but I really was so chill and cool. And he was really beating himself up. And I was like, babe, you drive a fast car. You're enjoying driving your car. We can listen to a podcast. It's really okay. And he was like, I'm just so, so how can I do that? How can I? And I was like, for, for future reference, maybe we do a little, we do, we, we let Shannon do her checks that she likes to do. And you don't say I'm treating you like a child. He's like, yeah, we do that. I was like, okay, maybe we just, maybe we can start implementing that back into our routine. And he's like, yep. Yeah, we can do that. So, yeah, I did not blow up with him. And he, actually, his parents said too. His parents were like, "You were so nice to him." I'm like, because it's the truth. And maybe this is like a little word of the wise lesson for you guys. Like, realistically, yes, is it like, of course, going to happen in life that we're all going to like nag our husbands and boyfriends for sure. But like, you try to think what happens after the nag. Like, what's like what happens after that? You know what I mean? He obviously is never going to leave his passport anywhere ever again. At least I hope not because this is probably traumatizing for him. And he did, we had to like change our train ticket, which actually was pretty easy. And then the amount of fuel he guzzles in that thing, like he ended up, I think, spending like 400 pounds in gas that day. So like he was being punished on his own volition enough. Like, what do I, why do I need to add on pile on top of it? So I was very kind, told him like accidents happen. It's okay. It's really not that serious. Like let's pick a podcast. We actually started listening to Dr. Death. Um, it's really, it's such a jarring podcast. If you guys haven't listened to it by Wondery, it's insanely good and terrible. So anyways, it was fine. Like we got there. We actually still made dinner. We came in running on hot on two wheels and then still made dinner. Everything was fine. And it's like a funny story. Whereas it could have been like me sitting in the front seat, like pouting, being like, I can't believe you did this. And we're sitting in the car. I'm so annoyed. Like what's like, grow the fuck up. You know what I mean? So that was our Paris adventure. Okay. Another thing. Did you guys know, this is something I just also recently figured out. I just learned something every day about this country. So James says to me, oh yeah, Mother's Day is this weekend. I'm like, because that's, you know, classic us, everyone. I'm like, is it? What is it? And so I'm like Googling it. It's not, it's not this weekend at all. It's, it's literally in May. I was like, it's in May. (laughs) He's like, oh, okay, good. Whew. And then we go to his parents' house for lunch on Sunday and they're like, something, something Mother's Day. And I was like, no guys, I just looked it up literally just in the car. Mother's Day is not till May. And they were like, America's Mother's Day in the UK Mother's Day is different. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, every country has a different like Mother's Day, Father's Day. I was like, what? Because obviously Christmas is the same. Easter's the same. So I was like, are you kidding me? And they're like, no. But I guess Christmas and Easter, those are both pretty biblical, huh? Those are probably like written in stone. But it, it lends me to my um, ever so complained about the whole like national holiday thing. Obviously, Mother's Day, Father's Day. We love those. I'm glad those are here. But like the whole like it's National Margarita Day. I'm like for the fifth time this fucking month, Jose Cuervo. I see your marketing schemes and you need to get better because like there's not this many. Na- Do you know how many times I get tagged in it's National Kiss of Ginger Day? That is so fucking creepy, too. Like wh- what? And everyone's like, did you know? I'm like, no, I didn't know because that's not fucking real. That's literally a made up thing that somebody with a fetish decided to call today. Get your little lips away from me. So, um, yeah, but Mother's Day, important that it is this weekend uh, in the UK. So happy Mother's Day if you're listening to this and you're a mom and you're from London. Let me ask you all a question that I already know the answer to. So picture this. You wake up and something's wrong with you. You have an odd ache, a weird pain somewhere, maybe a mark or a spot shows up and you immediately do what? Call your doctor? Eh. No, I know exactly what y'all do because I used to do it too. And that is instantly go to Google and type in your symptoms, which usually lead us to think that we have mm, roughly two weeks to live and that we need to get all of our affairs in order. And don't even get me started on this new TikTok medical rabbit hole because I found myself in it before and it's a scary place. It is a whole new level. Now, I can assure you, you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice on Google, your BFF group chat, 
or TikTok, but you can find it on ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding great care should not take up all your energy. This actually happened to me the last time I had the flu. I was literally on my deathbed and legit, I was crying and calling my mom and I was trying to find medical professional to help. It just should not be that hard. That is why myself and millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book doctors in their neighborhood whose patient reviewed fits their needs and their schedule just right. No more doctor roulette trying to find the right person who can help you. Book an appointment in their free app with a few taps and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash probably and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within even 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash probably. ZocDoc.com slash probably. Okay, let's give a house update because everyone was asking about that. So since I've been gone, since you've been gone, since I've been gone, which has only been a week and a half, two weeks, Taylor's been sending me pictures. Y'all, my house is straight up built. Not really, but like the framing. So before it was just like, I was watching concrete being poured and the, the, um, contractors and the construction company is really cool. They like send you pictures. There's like a shared Google doc where they like update it. So I have been getting pictures and it's, it's a lot of like foundation, right? Like it's like they scraped the dirt, they poured the concrete, they put these footer things. I'm like calling my dad, like, I got footers. He's like, cool. I'm like, don't know what that means. He's like me either. I'm like, nice. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're just like watching these things slowly happen, but it's so exciting. Then all of a sudden I'm seeing framing. Like it's straight up, like, you know, the shape of my house is going up with these little sticks. And I'm like, Whoa, that's like a whole wall. I swear within like two days, the the whole house is like, done. like the framing of the entire house is done. And then two days after that, Mike's like, your framing's done. I'm going to walk through it. Do you want me to send you a video? And I'm like, Yes, because I told you guys, I am so visual. Like, I'm just such a visual bitch that even having the 3D digital renderings, I've just been like, I can't just like, obviously, I know where my master furniture will go. I know where this will go and that will go. But I've got things like upstairs dens and like random living room spaces that I'm just like, so where will I put that? And what do I need to? We all know how long furniture takes to fucking get in. So I'm like trying to be smart and diligent about like placing orders, but I'm like, I don't know what will go where. So I am excited to get back and just kind of do a walkthrough. And Mike sent me a video and I was just like, this is freaking crazy. And it's so funny because Taylor and Mike's house, obviously the lot next door, they're like, yep, just our basement because their basement is taking, obviously, understandably, like a while to build because they have to dig out a basement and then like structurally put the concrete. Honestly, this place is going to be so fucking tornado proof. So crazy that the UK just has no tornadoes ever. And then they just rip through middle America. So. Yeah, the house is very exciting. Someone did ask and was like, why are you letting Taylor pick everything out for your house? And I'm like, I know that was supposed to be a burn, but also it's kind of a flex. Like my best friend is essentially an interior designer. She's so fucking good at it. And she's also just like willing to do it for me. I don't know if she's that willing, but I just beg her to do it. So like shout out to me for harnessing that best friend guilt and making her do it all. Because again, like she just sees stuff. Or I just did this like trend on TikTok where it was like 20, uh, March, 2020 to March, 2023. And I mean, you guys are going to be really nice and say, you look beautiful in both, but like loud help. Like I posted like that's on getting rid of hair extensions, lash extensions, 14 layers of makeup and redoing my fucking veneers. And everyone's like, Taylor told you to do all that. <laughs> like, it's so true. Like, she always tells me, like, you should, like, not have lash extensions. And I'm like, you're crazy. I can't live without them. And then finally I don't have them. And I'm like, oh, my God, who is she? I'm stunning without them. Just kidding, but not. Because, like, they were just, like, a lot. You know what I mean? Look like I was about to fly away. And then same with hair extensions. Same with, like, a million things. She does tell me not to get spray tans anymore, which maybe one day when I'm, like, 64, I'll be like, you were always right. But, like, right now, I'm going to keep fucking being tan. So, the house. Yeah. That's basically the update with the house. It's very exciting. Um, my family is going to spend Christmas there. Maybe Thanksgiving. Probably not. I think we'll probably do Thanksgiving back at the lake, but yeah, that's what I'm like the most excited for. Cause obviously my house is slated to be done. I put air quotes cause like who knows, but slated to be done in July again, who knows? And then 
yes, it'll be done, but like, you know, it's going to take forever to get everything like right and like furnish the place. It's five bedrooms. So like, I got to figure out how to put all the furniture in there. So that is exciting because I've always just like wanted a big house where my whole family could come and, you know, immediate family. I don't have like a massive family, but extended family is massive. So I've just always been around like big, big groups of people. And my parents' house is not massive, but it's just like always, we've always just all been in there and together. So I love like the camaraderie and just like, the, I'm just, obviously you guys know, I'm big, 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 huge on family. So I'm excited to have like a big kitchen for my mom and all of us to cook in and just, we'll see TVD on the Christmas tree. I know you guys were all here for my 15 foot Christmas tree debacle. I did not do that this year. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see how big of a Christmas tree I put in uh, this time. Cause the last one was so big. They had to come in and like chainsaw it in half to remove it from the house. And at that point you think to yourself, Hey, what are you not spending money on? Like, Hey, maybe just like, don't be such a dumb bitch with your money. So we're trying to be financially smart, but also Christmas, you know, don't be a Grinch. Maybe I want a 15 foot tree. All right. So obviously we have to discuss this. I'm steadily looking at my timer always <laughs> just because um, I'm in a new studio. So I'm always like, how long am I talking? We're going to make this episode a little bit shorter than normal, but I would be remiss, amiss, remiss, who knows? It would be absolutely diabolical if I didn't. And I know I get, I'm like, I'm kind of like 2000 and late on this, but I haven't recorded a podcast since the whole scandal happened. So I have to discuss scandal. So, I mean, when I tell you the way I have deep dived, I know we all have basically like everyone has fucking looked into the Vanderpump Rules scandal with freaking Ariana and Tom Nasty Ho and Rachel. It's the Rachel for me. Okay. So I have been obsessed with Van. I've actually never said this before. Maybe. I don't think I have. Uh, maybe I have. And I'll go deeper when I do like a rewatch series of Very Cavallari. But oh, that was another question. Someone asked, has James ever seen Very Cavallari? No, I hope he never does. Every once in a while, like maybe like once every three months, he'll be like, I want to watch that. And I'm like, no, don't. Um, not because I think he'd be like, you were the villain, but just because I'm like, there's just so many things. I'm like, Ugh. so I I'm not ashamed of the show. I just, you know, one of those things you're just like, no, I feel uncomfy. Don't watch it. <laughs> First of all, I don't know a single person who isn't obsessed with Topgolf after they've tried it. If you haven't been, it's this massive, stunning, cool venue that has so much more than just golf. It's an experience. So I've gone with all my friends. I've taken my parents there. I've gone with my goddaughters. It's legit perfect for anyone. I'm personally not super good at golf, but that's where it's fun because it doesn't matter. I've gone with my friends before that are legit so good at golf. And sometimes I've even beaten them at games we play. They've got these huge light up targets that you try to hit into a massive fairway. And there's a ton of different games that are associated with them. Another thing I did was I had my friends who were really good at golf, help me with my swing and teach me more about golf. And I didn't feel all stuffy and pressured or whatever, because I was in such a relaxed atmosphere. They have music pumping, amazing food, and drinks that get delivered right to your bay. Get the pizza, trust me. And personally, my favorite part is that even though it's technically outside, it's covered. And so in the winter, they got heaters that make it cozy. And in the summer, they've got fans to keep you cool. And shout out to my lefties because another reason that I never really play golf or I guess I'm kind of intimidated is because I don't actually have my own set of clubs and it's rare that someone else is left-handed and Topgolf hooks it up with the lefty clubs. Actually, everyone gets to choose whichever club they want when they're in there. I just genuinely have such a good time every time I'm there. Also, if there's someone in your life that wants to have fun but also can't miss a game on TV, we all know the type, then don't worry, they have giant TVs everywhere. I'm telling you, the next time that you don't know what to do with your friends, with your parents, or even with your kids, take them to Top Golf. It will not disappoint. Also, it's fun to try something new. I never thought that I'd be interested in golf, but Top Golf makes you forget that it's a serious sport and you just have fun with it. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. Download the app, book a bay, and come play around. Whenever we started Very Cavallari, Kristen had kind of said from the get go, I don't know if she. I don't want to speak out of turn. She might not have made the direct comparison. I think maybe I did or maybe producers did or maybe she did. I can't remember. But basically, Very Cavallari was modeled after Vanderpump Rules in the sense that like Kristen was the Lisa Vanderpump and the show followed all of her. I definitely have said this on a podcast before. The show followed all of her, but maybe it wasn't my podcast. Okay, anyways. Um, the show followed all of her. I think I said it on Not Skinny, but Not Fats. Okay, back to the point. Sorry. Um, 
So the show followed all the cast members, not cast members, the the people that worked for her, right? Versus like following Kristen nonstop. It followed her some, but not all the way. It was mostly like put on her like staff, which she did tell me. She was like, I've had the drama in my life before, aka like Laguna Beach and the Hills. She's like, I want this to be about y'all's drama and just kind of like somewhat focus on me as a me and my family. So, but then obviously, as we know, like Jay and all that was, he was like a great, you know, breakout star in the show. And then they started, I, I don't know, because I got kicked off the show, but like, I'm pretty sure in season two and three, they started focusing more heavily on like Kristen's storylines and stuff. Um, but yeah, the season I was on was very much modeled after Vanderpump Rules. So I've always been a fan of Vanderpump Rules anyways, but what did I do whenever I decided to do a reality TV show forever ago? I said, I'm going to fucking deep dive on exactly how to be successful. So I watched shows that were all on E, right? Because did Vanderpump start on E? No, it was always on Bravo. So I watched shows on E that failed, right? I watched shows that had like one season and got canceled because I wanted to know what not to do. I'll tell you what they did. They all, the the drama was so fake. Like it was so obviously fake. And they were, there was too many people trying too hard to like be the villains. They were too, it was too much. Right. And then I already watched Vanderpump Rules, like I said, but then I wanted to watch a really successful show that kind of modeled after like the, the template that ours was, ours was trying to go, Vanderpump Rules. So I started deep diving more. So I became obsessed with even more so Vanderpump Rules. And it is just the most like, fucking iconic, iconic freaking television show ever, like start to finish. We've grown up with them. We love them. Stassi, like all of them are just, it, it's just such a good show. It's such a good show. So anyways, this scandal. Here's my thing. I remember when Rachel, we're not calling her Raquel. I remember when Rachel first came on the scene, I was like, does this girl definitely just like want to be on TV? But then, I, but then you start to kind of feel bad for, and I'm like, I'm a hoe for reality TV. Like I, I keep up with it on Instagram too. Like when these girls and guys go get interviewed for podcasts, whatever, I watch them like chicks in the office, like not even off that. Like I watch all of their interviews too. Right. So I'm like, you know, I feel like up to date with them. And I started like actually kind of liking Rachel. Like I was like, oh, do I like her a little bit? I don't know. She wasn't the most likable person, but then she kind of, you kind of turn. You're like, mm, okay, maybe. Right. And then this season, admittedly, I didn't really watch this season that much. And then, and then when this happened, I was like, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. How in the world? Could you in your head be like, I just want to know what her end goal was. Like, what was she thinking in the moment? Like, okay, so we're going to sit Ariana down. We're going to tell Ariana, like, we're in love. We've had an affair for seven months. Or were they going to lie, not talk about how they've been together for seven months, but then just say, like, we want to be together. Or was, I know there was talk that he said he was always going to break up with her, but then it was never a good time. Like, I am just so perplexed. He obviously showing no remorse at all based on his like, you know, first statement he made that was like about his business where like, no one gives a fuck about your little fucking Tom and Sandy place. And then two, he's like, the next one came out about Ariana, but I still didn't really buy it. I was just like, you are so manipulative and I hate it. Then the punch heard around the world, right? I'm just like, I don't condone violence, but nobody feels bad for you, Rachel. Like nobody, if that's your move, like I almost feel like, and I might be just talking, <laughs> this might be really fucking out there, but I just like almost feel like she's probably a little happy she got punched. So she has something so that she has something so she can be like, we should never resort the results of physical violence. Like I low key feel like she's like, oh gosh, thank goodness. At least I got punched in the face so that I will have like a morsel of maybe possibly sympathy from some people. But like, you're just like not going to get it from me. Like I do, like I kind of wish Sheena hadn't punched her one, because like for sure, physical violence, don't do it. But like, I kind of wish she didn't punch her just so that she didn't have this to say that she has, you know what I mean? So she doesn't have the restraining order. So she doesn't have all this shit. I'm very excited to see the reunion it happen because I'm just like shook to my core about all of it. But obviously team Ariana to my core, I'm dying because you know, I love when other people get involved like me, like I love being involved in other people's shit. But whenever like Lala and all them, I'm hanging on to every morsel of every single thing they put up, like send it to fucking Daryl. I am just... I'm, I'm hook, line, and sinker in on this scandal from start to finish. Cannot wait. Those are my opinions. I'm pretty sure they mirror everyone else's opinion, but I just feel like I couldn't not get on here and discuss that. So, scandal ball, absolutely just foul. Foul. The lightning bolts. I had, sh uh, do I? Oh, yeah. These socks. Oh, it's kind of tight in here. But I've got lightning bolt socks, and I feel like I should burn them. You know what I mean? They're little necklaces where they wear the lightning bolts. I'm just like, I, y'all are so foul.
So Fal, wait, we can actually go back. We're gonna we're gonna pivot right back after Scannaball to talk about another thing with the house, because you guys know me and my notes. They're just ever fucking scribbles and you know, whatever. So going back to the whole like Taylor knows everything before I do, someone met someone wrote in and was like, Hey, will you discuss your like style evolution for like your houses as far as from when you went from apartments to townhouses, then a house that you live in now, and then you're building a house. Like, what's the style? What's the vibe going to be? And I kind of already touched on it about how, like, I want it to feel warm and cozy because I want my family there for Christmas and whatever. Like, I want to start a family there, like, have kids one day in this house. That's the goal, right? So I'm, like, warm, cozy. I'm going to take almost everything. I am going to take everything in my current house, which is, like, very warm vibes. I'm going to take that to, and it's like woods and creams and like greens and stuff. I'm going to take that to the new house for sure. But the style evolution is funny because Taylor has, um, other than the house I live in now, cause she picked it all out. Taylor's always really hated everything I've always done in my house. And that's not, sometimes y'all are like, she's so mean. I'm like, no, no, no. She's just a real bitch. Like she's just honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I've told y'all that I'm trying to save money recently. I am trying to be better about it, okay? But the cold hard facts are that I am simply always going to be buying food, things for my new house, and just straight up like everyday items like deodorant or toothpaste, right? Like I need these things. I've got to have those things. Also, also, maybe a little treat for myself every once in a while. Okay, sue me. But the trick that I've been using lately is Ibotta because you get cash back on all these things that you were already going to buy anyways. It's like free money. And with inflation right now, I think we can all agree that something as simple as uploading your receipt when you get back home from shopping is an easy enough task when doing that means that you get the money to spend and use towards something fun. The average Ibotta user gets up to $120 a year and just straight up cash back from shopping. That's a flight somewhere or a fancy steak dinner that you won't feel so guilty about. And it's just so easy. That's the thing about Ibotta. They give you real cash back, not all these point situations that other apps do. Real money, the green stuff that we know and love. You can put it in your bank account, PayPal, gift cards, whatever. But it's money, not points. Places that I use Ibotta the most are Sephora, you know, I'm a makeup queen, Lowe's for stuff for my house, Best Buy for my business expenses, and so many more. And right now, Ibotta is offering my listeners $5 just by trying Ibotta by using the code PROBABLY when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibotta app and use code PROBABLY. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code PROBABLY. Basically, forever ago, as you guys know, I was broke as a joke, didn't have any money. So like when it came to designing my house, I took, I took, I, I have got to find these photos. I took what was from my dorm room in college. Cause I moved here after moved to Nashville right after college. And I put it in my room. I'll never forget my first boyfriend. Well, my, my roommate in Nashville was like, what the fuck is all this mermaid shit? Cause it was like, my mom, when I moved to my dorm room, my mom didn't go buy the dorm rooms you see on TikTok now are absolutely out of control. My mom took shit at our house that she wasn't using anymore and gave it to us. We live at the lake. Our house has a very like lake water, not beachy, but like water theme, right? She put that in my dorm room, got me a couple things here and there, like bought me a bed, I think. And then all of it, when I moved to Nashville, I just, because I already had some of those things and I had no money, I started going to like home goods and buying other beachy beach related mermaid things, right? You guys, I'm 20 fucking two at this point. This is embarrassing. So my whole room is beach themed. It is, it's odd. It's odd. It doesn't really flow. The first guy I dated in Nashville came to my room and was like, nice seashells. And I was like, oh no, I'm embarrassed. Like from that point forward, I think I started trying to like evolve into just like normal adulthood room things. Not like, you know, condo in, in Fort Lauderdale vibes. So I went to just like, it was so random. It was like anything that was trendy, like anything that had a mirror on it, anything that was like the, the chokehold that white marble had on all of us with gold trim. I mean, let's be real. So, but it was all fake, right? Like it was all like sticker. It was like a sticker of marble put on to like a metal table. And then that was like a hodgepodge. Taylor would always be like, I hate it. Or she'd always be like, it's giving me hives. And I'm like, I love it. But Taylor wasn't the only one. One of my friends, one of my friends, Paige, Paige Stoker, shouts out, love that bitch. She came over to my house one time. I was so stoked, jazzed, um, because she actually, Paige used to put gas in my car whenever I didn't have gas, like still so broke. And um, she, yeah, they basically, I bought this, like it was a fleece blanket from Home Goods. It was velvet fleece, or just, no, it was fleece. And it was deep, deep purple. And I had it on my bed just as like that was my like sheet like comforter 
and then like pillows, whatever. And I remember being like taking a picture, like snap and putting it on Instagram. And Paige called me and was like, Shannon, we get that's not your like, that's not your bedding, is it? And I was like, yes, queen just bought it. It's a queen fits on my bed. And she's like, that's a throw blanket. And I was like, mm, no, that's a blanket that goes on your bed. And she's like, oh, no, we're better than this. We got to we got to fix this. So it's been quite the evolution of just like me doing everything I like and it being terrible. And then um, it's finally at a point now where I feel really good about it. But I will say this, and this is to anyone listening that has beach in their house, that has any weird purple um, throw blankets as their duvet, whatever you say, every single time I decorated my room, I was happy. Every time I added anything, even though it made Taylor cringe or other friends call me and be like, no, it always made me happy. So make your house, your house should be your sanctuary. It should make you happy. If you walk in that bitch and you feel good about it, feel good about it. Now, obviously I have like some nicer things and some things that I've just listened to Taylor about. And every time I'm like, what? There's just like one specific chandelier. It's like a bubble chandelier in my office. When she sent that to me, I was like, oh my God, what is this? Like, are you sure? And she's like, you have to have it. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I want this. And I pointed to something that I've seen in like 800 magazines. She's like, everyone has that do this. What do I do? I listen to her. I get the bubble thing. Now the bubbles everywhere. Everyone's like, I love your bubble thing. And it's backward and no one can get it, but I have it. She is such an on-trend bitch. She always knows stuff beforehand. She's a witch. Okay, so that is going to wrap it up with solo podcast. Well, thanks for listening to a podcast, as you can see behind me. Um, love you guys. I'm going to be in London for another week, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.